Hello and welcome to the Aquarium. Come in and take a seat, the show is about to begin. Fossil seal accounts have been known to science since 1839. Some of these fossils date back to around 360 million years ago. The most recent fossils of seal accounts date to around 80 million years ago, and so it was thought that they went extinct during the mass extinction event 66 million years ago that wiped out the dinosaurs. But that thinking had to change in 1938, when Hendrik Goosen, a trawler captain, returned to the port of East London in South Africa with a strange looking fish that was unlike anything he had ever seen. He contacted Marjorie Courtney Latimer, a curator at the Museum of East London, to see if she was interested in it. However, the fish did not make it into port until several hours after it was caught, and the skin had turned a dark grey colour instead of the blue it had been when it was caught. Courtney Latimer could not immediately identify the fish and quickly had it stuffed by a taxidermist to preserve it before it deteriorated further. It was later identified as a coelacanth by J. L. B. Smith, an ichthyologist from Rhodes University. The coelacanth became known as a living fossil, but some doubted its validity and believed the specimen had been modelled to look like a coelacanth, and as the bones and gills had been discarded after taxidermy, it was difficult to prove otherwise. But doubts were finally put to rest in 1952 when a second specimen was caught. By 1975, 84 specimens in total had been caught and recorded. More exciting news followed in 1997 when another specimen was found for sale in an Indonesian fish market. This specimen, as well as being found in a different location, was brown instead of blue like the previous examples. This specimen was lost as it was sold, but one year later another specimen was caught and it was confirmed to be a separate species. In 2013, scientists sequenced the coelacanth genome. Because of the strong, lobed fins of the coelacanth, it was once thought that these fish might be the ancestors of the first land-dwelling animals or tetrapods. It was thought that these fins were used to emerge from the water. The DNA shows that the lungfish is actually the last common ancestor between marine and terrestrial vertebrates. It is now known that the coelacanth is closer related to lungfish, reptiles and mammals than to other bony fish. It's also been realised that the coelacanth is still evolving, although at a very slow rate. This has meant that the term living fossil has fallen out of favour. The West Indian Ocean coelacanth and the Indonesian coelacanth are the only two known living species. Both species are considered endangered. The biggest threat to coelacanths is overfishing, although they have little commercial value due to them being mostly inedible. They are considered a poor source of food for humans, and likely most other fish-eating animals. Coelacanth flesh has high amounts of oil, urea, wax esters and other compounds that are difficult to digest and can cause diarrhoea. Their scales themselves emit mucus, which combined with the excessive oil their bodies produce, makes coelacanths a slimy food. Whether coelacanth is more common, local fishermen avoid it because of its potential to sicken customers. However, before scientists became interested in coelacanths, they were thrown back into the water if caught. Now that there's an interest in them, fishermen trade them into scientists or to other officials once they have been caught. Coelacanths live in temperate waters in the twilight zone, generally between 500 to 800 feet, that's about 152 to 243 meters, off steep rocky slopes of volcanic islands. In the daytime, the West Indian specimens are known to cluster together in caves in submarine lava deposits, from which they venture at night to feed. They can be huge, reaching 6.5 feet or more and weighing 198 pounds. Scientists estimate they can live up to 60 years or more. A coelacanth is a passive drift feeder, moving slowly and passively near the substrate where it feeds primarily on cuttlefish, squid, octopus and other fish. It is capable of moving quickly and may do so when capturing prey or avoiding danger. Well that's all I have for you today and as always I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new. If you did I would really appreciate it if you would like the video and leave me a comment down below. I hope to see you next time when we'll be looking at the plesiosaur and I'll see you then. Goodbye.